Hi, my name is Benedict, experimenting with a different camera angle. Not sure whether it'll last, but uh, it's good, good to try different things. Looking at a, uh, a device called Peak Eater. It's kind of a horrid name, but it does represent exactly what it does. It swallows peaks. It's a clipper. And normally I use uh, the, um, like for my mastering, I use the, um, the clipper maximizer soft clip that comes within reason. And if I absolutely need it elsewhere, then I probably use something like G-Clip. But I've never loved G-Clip. It does the job just fine. But visually, it's not moved itself forward. And there have been a few clippers come out recently, most of them hype and garbage wear. This one is interesting. It's a, it's a freebie. It's like a, a um, open source shareware-y kind, well, not shareware, it's an open source freebie. I don't know what the term is for it these days, really don't care. I'll put the GitHub link down below. So I threw together this with loading fruit sounds. Pulled the mix up to a VU of around zero minus 12 dB with the peaks where it is. So we'll say this is mastered per se. That's probably where I would stop for my own music. But I know a lot of people would want it louder. So try this. Hello. This is telling me that it has actually swallowed about 7 dB of, uh, I believe this is RMS. I've boosted about five. So as you see here, it's gotten a lot louder with the same sort of output. Now that's interesting. That's roughly around where people will tend to have things. I'm not interested in whether this is right or wrong by anybody's luffs guide or whatever. I'm just showing the device and what can be achieved. In headphones, it sounds a bit ghastly, but um, I would never work like this anyway. But it is working and it's working surprisingly nicely. If we were to go into iPhone mode, no enhanced clipping. A lot more consistency. This will sound better in speakers than it will in, in headphones. It's probably part of why the whole loudness wars overly loud mixing, because it definitely beefs up within that setting. Let's go again with You know, like a bad speaker mode, like a Bluetooth tub. Again, it beefs up, becomes a little more solid. Off. On. Beefs up. There is a little bit of a splatty sound, but I'm swallowing an awful lot more than I think is entirely wise. But I wanted to see how far can we go. Over speakers, my nice my studio monitors, this does still sound really good. And only at over two oversample. With no oversample, I think it still sounds pretty good. Go up to a plus 16. And my CPU is, is barely moved. There are a couple of ways of approaching using this. We'll turn the oversampling off for now. We can set everything to as it is. In other words, nothing is happening. We can turn down the ceiling, which means it just progressively hacks the tops off everything. Mm, attractive. Move into soft uh, clip modes. which attempt to move around. So they start to clip underneath the threshold. You would consider perhaps being a little less aggressive with them. But they won't sound quite as loud. That sounds loud and lamentably forward. 
that is dealing with a lot more overhead. So a couple more dB of chewing. It depends what you want to achieve there. Most people who are doing the loud thing want the loud as possible. So one of these in between is probably a nice compromise without having it sound too hitting a brick wall. But most people wanted to hit a brick wall, uh, especially seeing I used a tech house drum loop in this, along with some bongos and tambourines. So. so that's one way of doing it, just pulling that down and then going, okay, well, I've got all this extra headroom and turning it back up again. That's a manual way of doing it. The other way of doing it does require a little bit of thought, but that is to simply push our input. But you can see that this can actually start to allow things out. So you might consider putting the ceiling down a little bit. As long as we do that, yes, it hits the zero, but it's still a little under. If we go down to minus one. And we see we never hit that. So as so long as you remember to put a ceiling that's below zero dB, you will get the kind of results that you're looking for. One thing I'm not so keen on in this situation is that all the activity then is right up sort of off the edge of the window. So I would prefer to, I think it was about 6 dB, do it this way. But it's all going to depend on how you want to achieve the kind of results that you do. There is no way to tie the ceiling and the output, whereas there is a way to tie um, the input and output. So it leaves us with the same, roughly, the same RMS as we had before. We've just swallowed all our peaks. Yeah. Kind of brutally swallowed. At that, this point, again, with that threshold ceiling right up there, the nice display becomes close to useless. You can use the zoom in, but it's still kind of close to useless. Um, or at least it's not pleasing to look at. I wish there was a way to take that zero and pull it down, which is probably why I prefer the, let's pull the ceiling down and then do it manually. You can begin the size, but I don't see a lot of advantage in that. So if we've taken 4 dB off, or more than point just by watching our meters here and listening with our ears, slightly chewed but exciting loud feeling. Now for this to work you really do want a reasonable mix. If you've got a poor mix this will accentuate it. Any flaws in your mixing will be accentuated. Uh, so if you come in going oh well I'll just this sounds great I'll just solve that poor mix by doing this you'll find that while it gets louder you'll actually exacerbate your dramas. So one suggestion is to perhaps be using something like this that you can drop into every now and then to say, well, am I really improving things? Just that transition from here to here, it's mono, it's like a frequency range of this will help you show if your mix isn't translating. If it doesn't translate to here and give you the results that you're looking for, obviously there's no bass here, but the piece feels like it's still doing its job. 
then that will help you to see if your mix is not right. If your mix is not right, then you've got to work out how to fix your mix and you should not be playing with this other than to perhaps just sort of say, okay, I'm going to replace, in this case, my maximizer with this, which I'm going to consider doing. I'm in the middle of a project, so I'm unlikely to change it now, but it's well worth looking at. So out of all of the clippers that have been around recently, and some, some freebies and what have you, this one I actually really rather like. There are some issues with it. You can resize it, but when you open it, the resize has disappeared. That's a bit disappointing. If I want it big, I always want it big. I don't want it to keep changing sizes on me. There is a thing for right-clicking, and it changes what they call the ticks. Okay, I don't understand the purpose to that. Okay, it changes the how they're moving things about. Okay, that's fine, but it doesn't seem entirely logical. I'm not particularly bothered by that. Just set it to whatever and it's wherever. These amounts here move incredibly fast. Um, fair enough, but that's just what they do. Uh, this picture here actually has no function. Uh, it might be better to put it down here where it's kind of out of the way. My input and output meters, from a, a, a graphic designer perspective, makes sense to have them on the left and right. They appear to be summed to mono, okay, fair enough. Uh, but they're harder to use when they're away from each other. Either putting them together or having an option to put them together would be nice. And because this is done in a, this is done as a smooth, and this is done as a smooth too, they're a little harder to differentiate. Maybe do them as an LED type readout or something, we might lose a little in resolution, but if they're together and there's a way to differentiate them from the, the, the graphics in the guts, yep, that's cool. Um, this, the linking kind of works okay, that's fine would be interesting to see if there is a way to link ceiling and output as a secondary option so that you can link input and output as one option or link ceiling and output in another option. That may be a far less sort of straight line kind of process. It's just a, wonder what happens if you do that? And again, just the fact that 0dB sits up the top here when it's actually much nicer when we can move our ceiling and see what's happening above it. Uh, so it's just, it's one of those scaling things. I sort of feel like, eh. And this ends up being right in the middle of things that we would be looking at. Not the end of the world, but... But overall, I think it sounds nice. There's no real description of these. It asks, offers us on the website to be able to go off and just look at some general talk about how these things work. And fair enough, it'd just be nice to have some of their considered understanding as to why they made these decisions. What what are going to be the advantages and disadvantages of each of these mathematical sounding things? I'm not here for math, I'm here for rock and roll. Uh, but as a tool, as it sits, cool. Though again, just the AB. <laughs> Real punch. And so long as you watch what your outputs are, it works really well, or you can do it the other way and set a um, set whatever you want as your thou shalt not pass. And then push into that. If you want, if you've set your RMS here already. pair of these We're just stuck with our graphic being right up there and it'd be nice to be able to move that down here into into the guts of the area because most of the time the people who are working with this unless they're working at, at an instrument level then they're probably going to be doing what we've got here but cool device happy to um happy to have presented it uh yeah that's it if I can help with mixes or anything, because remember your mix has to be good, this won't solve a poor mix, then uh, 
There'll be links below so you can have a chat to me about uh, helping you get good mixes. Have a great day.